Hi, thank you for joining us this week. We've got lots of interesting things to talk about today. Uh, first, I have a bit of housekeeping. I mispronounced E-D-I-N-B-U-R-G-H, which does not rhyme with Pittsburgh. I was right about that. A nice gentleman from Scotland who saw the video uh, emailed Alistair and told him that in Scotland, most people pronounce the name of their, ca of their big city, Edinburgh, Edinburgh. Very softly, Edinburgh. Okay, I apologize. I must confess that uh, regular English is not my native tongue. I am a very proud Southerner, and I spoke Southern English until I went to work in radio. And there I had to go to speech school. It wasn't to get rid particularly of my Southern accent, but it was to make me understandable, which is which makes sense. So, to it, to be in radio, you learn to pronounce the endings from all of your words. That's not a sec too much of a secret. But today we're going to do a history lesson about the 1500s, and just by coincidence, I am researching in my genealogy a whole little herd of people who lived in that time period, 1400s, 1500s. And it is amazing how many records exist from that time as well. But back then, most people got married in June because they took their yearly bath in May and still smelled pretty good by June. However, if they were starting to have a fragrance, brides carried a bouquet of flowers to hide their fragrance. <laughs> Baths consisted of a big tub filled with hot water. The man of the house had the privilege of the nice clean water, then the sons and the other men would take a bath, then the women, and finally the children, all in the same water. But last of all, and my goodness, these babies must have had strong constitutions, they bathed the babies in that filthy water. By then, the water was so dirty, you could actually lose somebody in it, hence the saying, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Houses back then had thatched roofs. Those were thick straw, piled high, with no wood underneath. It was the only place for animals to get to get warm. So all the dogs and cats and other small animals like bugs and rats and mice lived in the roof. When it rained, it became slippery. Sometimes the animals would slip and fall off the roof. Hence the saying, it's raining cats and dogs. There was nothing to stop things from falling into the house either. This posed a real problem in the bedroom where bugs and other droppings could really m mess up your nice, clean bed. Hence, a bed with a sheet over the top would protect you from some of these critters. But that's how canopy beds came into existence. The floor was dirt, and only the wealthy had something other than dirt. Hence the saying, dirt poor. The wealthy had slate floors that would get slippery in the winter when wet. So they spread thresh on the floor. That's straw, really. They, but they called it thresh. They spread thresh on the floor to keep their footing. As the winter wore on, they kept adding more and more thresh until when you open the door to outside, it would all start slipping out. A piece of wood was placed across that door on the bottom to keep all of the all of the thresh in, and that's where our word threshold comes from. They cooked in the kitchen with a big kettle that always hung over the fire. Every day they lit the fire and added things to the pot. They ate mostly vegetables and did not get much meat. They would eat stew for dinner leaving leftovers in the pot to get cold overnight 
and add to these to start over the next day. Sometimes the stew had food in it that had been there for quite a while. Hence the rhyme, peas porridge hot, peas porridge cold, peas porridge in the pot, nine days old. I guess they had not invented germs back then. Sometimes they would obtain pork, which made them feel quite special. When a visitor came over, they would hang up their bacon to show it off. It was a sign of wealth that a man could, you can say it with me, one, two, three, bring home the bacon. They would get off, cut off a little to share with guests, and they'd all sit around and chew the fat. Those with money had plates made of pewter. Food with a high acid content caused some of the lead to leach onto the plate, causing lead poisoning and sometimes death. This happened most often with tomatoes. For th so for the next 400 years or so, tomatoes were considered poisonous. All that time people had to go without summer tomato sandwiches. Oh my! Most people did not have pewter plates, but had trenchers, a piece of wood with the middle scooped out a little bit like a bowl. Often, trenchers were made from stale bread, which was so old and hard that they could use them for some time. Trenchers were never washed, and a lot of times worms and mold got into the wood and old bread. After eating off wormy, moldy, trenchers, one could get trench mouth. Bread was divided according to status. Workers got the burnt bottoms of the loaf, the family got the middle of the loaf, and the guest got the top. Guess what that was called? The upper crust. Lead cups were used to drink ale or whiskey. The combination would sometimes knock folks out for a couple of days they would just fall over wherever they are, on the road or in the house or in the barn. But sometimes the combination of the lead and the acid in the ale and whiskey would knock them out for a couple of days. And somebody maybe walking across the road or along the road would take them for dead and prepare them for burial. They were laid out on the kitchen table for a couple of days and the family would gather around and eat and drink and wait to see if they would wake up. Hence the custom of holding a wake. England is small and it's old, and they started running out of places to bury people. So they would dig up the coffins and take the bones to the bone house and reuse the grave. When reopening these coffins, one out of about 25 coffins were found to have scratch marks on the inside, and they realized that they had been burying people alive. So they tied a string to the wrist of the corpse and led it through the coffin and up through the ground, and they would tie it to a bell. Somebody would sit in the graveyard all night. The graveyard shift comes from that, and they would listen for the bell. Thus, somebody could be saved by the bell. If they weren't, it was called they were a dead ringer. I guess it's time for us to have a small prayer. This one is not, well, it is, but it's sort of funny, and I hope you'll enjoy it. And right now in my genealogy, I need this so badly. And you pray. Nobody knows who wrote this, by the way. Please help me find out who is my great-grandmother's second son, who married his first cousin once removed. They had twin daughters who married brothers of a family down the road. He later remarried his late wife's youngest sister and adopted her 14 children, of whom the fourth oldest son married my second cousin. <laughs> Amen. Thank you for being with us this time. Hope you had a good time. 
and we will talk to you next time.